Let the wind blow through my soul At the wheel, I'm captain in command I'm a rambling man, I won't be tamed I'm a throwback to the good old days So call me an outlaw, maybe I am When the wailing song comes on in my truck I don't turn it down, I turn it up Town. Turn a little joint upside down. I get a rowdy crowd feeling right. When my boots hit the hardwood stage. I know why I was made. I'm here to raise a little hell tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, live from the American Bank Center, from the sparkling city by the sea, Corpus Christi. Please give a warm welcome for Steve. I got tired of watching comedy specials on TV filmed in California. And we're going to do it right here in South Texas. I'm right. Nothing better than being home, man. I love this place. I love this town, man. Uh, I'm honored that you're here, man. And I hope you have a good time tonight because you're all going to be on TV with me tonight. Are you ready? Oh, uh, yeah. I, uh, I got to tell you, man, I, uh, I live in California now. If you ever get a chance to go to L.A., uh, don't. It's, it's hard for me. I have, a, you know, I have a Texas brain living in California. I don't mix. I, uh, I'll tell you this. Story. I bought a house. People tell you that when you make money, you should get into real estate, so I, I did. Uh, they say you can't go wrong. Uh, yeah, yeah, you can. I, I bought a house. I, I was even being smart. I bought a house with the house behind the house to rent the house behind the house to help me pay for the house. And I rented the house behind the house to help me pay for the house. And the people in the house behind the house, well, uh, they didn't pay rent. And, and, I, and I couldn't kick them out because in California, uh, they protect those pieces of shit. Seven months, they lived in my house rent free. Three months into not paying rent, uh, they come to my house, tell me I need to fix the AC. So I beat the shit out of them in my front yard. And now I have a restraining order on my own house. Uh, that wouldn't happen in Texas. Somebody, somebody doesn't pay rent in Texas. I could walk in my house, shoot them both in the face. And the cops would come and go, why did you do that? And I go, ah, they wouldn't leave. And the cops go, well, you gotta do what you gotta do, I guess. Uh, <laughs> yeah. uh, I'll, tell you, I'll tell you this story. Uh, I was in my backyard uh, the other night at midnight in my underwear, smoking a cigarette like a man. And, I say like a man, because when I was younger, you couldn't get me to take my shirt off, but now that I'm fat, hairy, and married, well, uh, I don't give a shit, really. Uh, <laughs> if, in my, if I'm in my underwear and I have to go outside, well, I just do. And whatever flip-flops are by the door, whether they're my wife's pink bedazzled motherfuckers, huh? I'll slip those fluffy sons of bitches on and go outside. And I'm not afraid to admit they're nice. They're pretty damn nice. Uh, <laughs> I was outside with my dog. I have a dog. His name is Jax. Uh, so me and, uh, me and Jax were in the backyard smoking cigarettes, and we were having our normal conversation about how much we hate my wife. And, <laughs> and then all of a sudden, Jax started to bark at something in the corner, and when I went over to go see what it was, it was a possum. I don't know if you've ever seen a possum, but those aren't animals. Those are gargoyles or some creepy shit. Uh, <laughs> And I don't know why the English language named it possum. That's too cute. Okay, in Spanish, we named it tacuache. Because if somebody said, would you like to see my possum? You'd go, yeah, I think I might. But if somebody said, you want to see my tacuache? you go, oh, fuck you. Yeah. Yeah, put your pants back on. I don't want to see it. Yeah. 
And I went over there, and, and, and the possum, the taquache, just went, ah! <laughs> Jax left. My dog was like, fuck you. I don't need this shit. Because <laughs> I thought it was a squirrel or something cute. Uh, I, I uh, went to the garage to get a shovel, because I'm going to kill that stupid son of a bitch. Because any animal stupid enough to let me leave, get a weapon, come back, and still be there, deserves to die. And I came back, and there he was. Ah! So I hit him on the head hard, and the possum just went, ah! I was like, oh, shit, I better go put some pants on. Uh, <laughs> I went inside, I put some pants on, I, I, I came back outside. Uh, guess who was waiting for me? The possum. But not only the possum, my shitty, Prius-driving, tree-hugging, organic-eating neighbor, Hollywood neighbor, she was waiting for me. She never talks to me. I, I've been there a year and a half. I've said hi to her. I've waved at her. She never talks to me. She hates me, as a matter of fact, probably because I have a 1978 K5 Blazer. <laughs> yep. With a, with a 350 in that bitch. Uh, it gets nine miles to the gallon. Uh, I told her it's a hybrid. It burns gas and oil. She, she, I walk over there, and there she is, over the fence. What's going on over here? I heard a shovel. I'm like, dang, lady, you really got to be listening to hear a shovel. I said, there's a possum. And she goes, oh, you're not going to kill it, are you? I said, no, ma'am, I have this shovel here to massage him. I said, yeah, I'm going to kill him. She goes, don't do that. Call animal control. I said, lady, I'm from Texas. I am animal control. I go, you have any wild hogs here? She goes, no. I go, you're welcome. She left. She left. She gave me that look. Ugh. She left. I still had a possum to kill, and, and hitting him on the head wasn't working. So I decided to choke that motherfucker out. I took the shovel, I, took, I put it on his neck, and I leaned on him. And he was still talking, shit. Ah! Now he was going to sleep, and I was like, you better tap out. He didn't. He died. And I put him on the end of my shovel to throw him in the street like a normal person. Act like I don't know what the fuck happened. As I'm walking to the street, listen to this, Texas. As I'm walking to the street, two cop cars, four police officers, and an animal control vehicle rolled up on me. My neighbor had called the cops, and they wrote me a ticket, $650, for killing a possum in my backyard. And I know, I know there's somebody in the room right now going, good, that's what you get. And if you're one of those people, you listen to me, you piece of shit. <laughs> next time, next time you call the cops because uh, you're getting mugged or your house got broken into and you're wondering where those cops are, well, they're with me, stupid, and my possum. <laughs> you know, doing important shit. $650, man. That wouldn't happen in Texas. If I was beating the shit out of a possum right here in South Texas. I'm pretty sure my neighbor would pop their head over the fence, but they'd probably say something like, you're going to eat that? <laughs> Come over and help like a real neighbor. With the weapons, here, shoot him in the face with this. <laughs> what is that, a nail gun? <laughs> well, you don't want to wake everybody up. Uh, <laughs> then they're going to want to eat, too. Uh, <laughs> I am... Uh, Proud to say I've lost 35 pounds this year. 30, yeah, 35. Those, uh, those of you that didn't clap, fuck you. Uh, you didn't clap because you have no idea how hard it is. I, uh, I am, I, I, it's hard. It is hard, and I've been running. Because people come up to me, how did you do it? There's not a secret pill. I just ran. I fucking ran, and I made my fat cry. I made my fat cry. <laughs> I, I cried a little bit too. I'm gonna be honest with you. I, uh, I, uh, I'm, I'm in a, I'm in a large. I used to be in an extra large. I'm in a large. Yeah. I, uh, 
It's a, it's a stand-up large. I can't sit down yet, but I look good standing up. I, I look, it looks good standing up, I'm telling you. <laughs> I, uh, I live in West Hollywood, so the gym I go to, they're all gay, a lot of gay, big gay, man, big. I'm pretty sure they could fuck me if they wanted to. Uh, <laughs> I've never worried as a grown man about getting raped, but I think, uh, I think now it's a possibility. Uh, I'm looking forward to getting raped, to be honest with you. Uh, that way, at least I know I have a nice body, you know? I, Steve, how do you know you're in good shape? Oh, my asshole hurts. Uh, I got raped. You know how good you have to look to get raped by men? That would be amazing. That means there's some gay dude at my gym going, that son of a bitch. Every time he walks by in those yoga pants, that son of a bitch. <laughs> some of you wonder, you go, Steve, why do you work out at a, at a, at a gay gym? I'll tell you why. Because I have a wife. And my wife works out at that gym. And I don't know if you've seen women's workout clothes, uh, but it's not clothes. <laughs> it's like they spray paint it on, or, or it's like extra skin or something. <laughs> my wife's like, I'm going to the gym. I'm like, really, honey, and that? You're going to wear that? Why don't you wear the bullshit you go to sleep in? Why don't you wear... <laughs> Why don't you wear those shitty sweats and that... That T-shirt, three sizes too big. The, the one with the pit stains and the hole in the side. Why can't I wear this? Because I can see your potato, honey. I can... Everybody can stare at your taquache, honey. You gotta... <laughs> she... It's not like I tell her what to do. My, you know, my wife, you know, she does whatever she wants. And I tell my wife, she goes, you're jealous. You don't want me to wear this outfit because you're jealous. No, I'm not jealous. I'm not. I, je I know men. I know them. I'm one of them. And we're disgusting. And I'm telling you ladies right now, when you wear yoga pants, uh, we follow you. And we wait till you get on that machine like that. And you wait and you... And then we just stare at your potato. We just stare. <laughs> Sometimes my wife, she'll wear a shirt, no bra. She goes, this shirt doesn't need a bra. Well, fucking put one on. <laughs> why, because you're jealous? No, because men love free range titties. That's why. They're... If there's a woman that's sitting down right now that's not wearing a bra, we all know where you're sitting. We all know. There's a camera guy in the back going, did you see her? Did you see her? I put the camera on her. I put the kid. We're disgusting. I I, uh, the other day I forgot, I was at the gym, at the gay gym, I forgot. And one of those girls in yoga pants was doing that, the whole potato in the air. And I was, I was looking, I was creepy. And I hit the guy next to me because he wasn't looking. I said, hey, hey, pay attention. He goes, oh, yeah, I see him. I go, him, no, her, her, her. <laughs> oh, you're gay, man. You're really gay. <laughs> That's what makes me realize you're, you're, you're born what you are. You're, you, don't, you don't choose to be gay. I'll give you an example. This is how men are. I, let me give you an example. I shop with my wife, all right? I don't shop, really. I sit on the bench in the middle of the mall, and my, my wife treats me like an eight-year-old. Wait here. Wait right here. <laughs> You better not leave. Answer your phone. You better be right here. And I just sit there. I sit there. And there's always some other asshole sitting there. And he's... We don't talk. But there's nothing to say. We just sit there. The only time we make contact is when, we, when one of you girls walks by in yoga pants. That's the only time we're like... Aah. And then we look at each other to make sure we both saw it. Aah. I didn't tell him. I didn't tell him. I didn't kick him. We just saw it. Cause that's, you, you are what you are. I love tits. And I don't know why. I, I love them. I love them. And I, I don't know. My wife goes, they're just fat. I go, yeah, but you're fat with nipples. And they're all awesome. Sometimes I watch TV and my wife likes to lay in front of me on the sofa. I have to grab a tit. And my wife's like, are you serious? Yeah, I'm pretty serious right now. Uh, <laughs> That's why I got married, so I can grab tits whenever I want. That's why I, got... I love them. And I, I... And some of you women, some of you women, 
you get insecure about your tits. And I'm telling you, as a man, don't, 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 don't. So women, my tits are small. Uh, I would like to see them. I only have one tit. Can I see it? I would like to see it. I'm an old lady, my titty sag, man, yeah, if you don't mind. I, I, I'm telling you, if an old lady came up to me and said, young man, would you like to see these old lady titties? I'd go, ugh, yes, yes, I would, yes, yes. yes, yes. Make it quick, 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 my wife's coming, make it quick. Because my wife gives me that look, the, the, the pathetic look. Ah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I know what I like. I, like. I, I know. I know what I like. Uh, and I tell I you how I know I'm straight. straight. I don't remember I'm choosing to be a straight man. I just know that I am. am. You know why? I, I, I see it, it, and my dick says, says "Go lighter." lighter. Her. <laughs> you should shiver half shit. shit. I'll, tell I'll tell you, you a woman owns half my shit, shit. Not a man. man. And I'm, and I'm pretty, pretty sure she has a vagina. I'm pretty sure. I, I've, I have seen it. I've seen it. I have every range of I've seen it in live. Life. Football practices. In football, there would be there one, one pole in the middle of the shower, our shower shower heads. Heads. And we would all shower, shower right, right there. there. And men, men, so good right next to me. Right next to me. Sometimes, sometimes I'm a glance. Just, 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 just see, see what I'm, what I'm up against. against. Uh, uh, I never once once I glanced at one of those, those and said, hey, hey, can I get a man in my mouth? Never once. Never once. Because I've, I've seen men so far there then, and nothing, nothing happened. Not nothing. Actually, something happened. Actually, happened. Actually, Actually my dick takes no sense of my body. <laughs> I get what I call a reverse boner. boner. And my penis hides the other dick. It's like, 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 but I'm telling you right now, now there were so many vaginas, vaginas there, there. I, I, I would be like lightheaded, is what I'm trying to say. say. <laughs> Those ladies, ladies, I don't know, know what happens to you when you say dick, I don't know. You should be straight when you say dick. I don't know, I don't know. Get a little, little clip on her. No, 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 I don't know. Get, get a little, get a little, little twitchy twat. I, I, I put my dick on women. I've done it. So they're dancing. I'll put my dick on them. And, and they, 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 don't, they, don't, they don't pick me off. They don't. And I'm, I'm telling you, as a straight man, if a dick touches me just, just a little bit, just, just right there, there fuck you, hair comes over. <laughs> I'll get up right there. <laughs> you ever, you ever get that touch? <laughs> hey, man, man, your dick touched me right there. <laughs> I don't even, I don't even know if it was your dick, but it was in the dick area. <laughs> uh, uh, thanks a lot, <laughs> asshole. Uh, now I have to eat a hot dog with a fork and a knife. Uh. <laughs> I have I have no uh, I have no problem with the gays. I don't, I don't care. My motto is focus on yourself, and, and that's what I do. I focus on myself. That's what I do. Uh, now, yeah, the gays they, they want to get married, which I think is stupid. I think it's dumb. Uh, no, because I'm married, and that's a fucking dumb idea. Uh, you know how much I would have loved to be able to, I wish it was illegal for us too. I would have loved to be able to look at my wife and go, we, we can, babe. We, uh, it's against the law, honey. It, it's, you, can, you can hang out here all you want, uh, but all this shit's still mine. <laughs> I've been married a while now. I, I don't recommend it. I, I don't. It's, it's hard. hard. What marriage is? Woo. Oh, some woman. Yeah, it has. It has. What marriage is? Uh, maybe the hardest thing I've ever done. I, I, and and I love my wife. That's why I married her. But motherfucker, you know what I mean? Sometimes I pass her in the hallway and I just go, "Fuck you." 
not out loud in my head. You know what I mean? Like, you, you piece of shit. What kind of animal squeezes the toothpaste from the middle? What kind of piece of shit? Oh, you laugh, but every morning I wake up to a big fuck you to me. Every morning. I tell her, I tell her, I tell her I hate it, but to, and I, uh, fuck you, there it is. I respect my wife and her pet peeves. I respect them. She wants me to take out the trash. I take it out. Even though I know all I got to do is push it down. <laughs> but mine, all oh, the toothpaste, every morning, fuck you. <laughs> I tell her, I go, you roll it. You roll it. You, you, you push it and you roll it. And I'll beg. Sometimes I beg her. Sometimes I beg my wife, baby, please. Baby, it drives me crazy. Can you just, uh, honey, if you could... Please, I beg, I beg. And then the next morning, fuck you, there it is. <laughs> and I'll lose it, I'll lose my shit. You motherfucking shit! Don't face! <laughs> and my wife will go, okay, that came out of nowhere. <laughs> and she'll throw the toothpaste away, she'll just throw it away. She doesn't pinch the corners, you pinch the corners. That's that's what, I, that's what I use every morning. I have a drawer of unpinched corners that I use. Because I guess to my wife, toothpaste is free. I guess it's fucking free. <laughs> I never thought, I never thought I would grow up to be a pinch the corner guy. I never thought. My dad's, my dad's a pinch the corner guy. And me and my sisters would sit on the couch and my dad on a Saturday would come in. What do you pinch the corner? Does this look done to you? <laughs> Me and my sister would be like, what the fuck, what's wrong with him? <laughs> now that's me, now I'm the guy. My dad used to walk around the house, turning off lights, talking to himself. I guess we're rich, I guess we're rich. <laughs> Who's gonna pay? Who's gonna pay? I'm gonna pay, I'm gonna pay. I guess I'm pay. <laughs> I used to think he was crazy, now I'm that asshole walking around my house. Nobody's even home, just by myself. I guess we're rich. I guess we're rich. <laughs> but you do it, man. You, you get married and... Wow. They're expensive, man. Women... Whew. I, thought, I thought they were born beautiful. That is not the case. Uh, all you single men in this audience, you listen to daddy. Listen to me good. You see a woman with highlights, run. That bitch is expensive. Uh, <laughs> right. God, God did not put highlights in her head. A gay man did. <laughs> and he knows more about your wife than you do. Uh, I, look at me, I, co I cost nothing, nothing. Sometimes I, I go months, nothing. My wife, something, something. The toes, the, something that costs money, it costs money. <laughs> Oh yeah, she, every week she goes to a Chinese lady, pays her $50 to rip the hairs off of her vagina. The Chinese lady sees her pussy more than me. And it comes back red and beat up. I don't even do that to it. I, she, she says it's for me, I do it for you. That, really, because I, I can do it hairy, I don't have a problem. I used to in high school. I know what I'm doing. Uh, you let me do it in the winter. I don't see what the problem is. Uh, you want to do something for me, uh, let it grow out. Save me $50 a week. <laughs> but you got to be a man. You grow up to be a... It's tough, man. It is tough. I don't even drive the nice car. I don't drive the nice car. My wife drives the nice car. I, I drive the shit car. That's my car, the shit one. <laughs> My wife doesn't care that it's brand new. I don't drive her a car. Sometimes, sometimes I drive it. Every once in a while, and every time, no gas, no fucking gas. Every time. <laughs> every time I get in the car, beep, beep, are you fucking kidding me right now? <laughs> I put eight dollars. <laughs> That's a gallon and a half. <laughs> Can you do it? You know I will, you know I will. Does my wife, does my wife care that it's a new car? Does she give a shit? No, she doesn't. She's wrecked it eight times. That's not the funny part. On the same spot, in the same spot of the garage. 
She doesn't care. Oh my God. Oh shit. I did it again. Uh oh, I don't know how I did that. I, I don't either. The garage doesn't move. I, it, it's, it's there every day. Same garage. Same, uh, I even hung a tennis ball in there uh, to tell you when to stop. But apparently, I don't. I don't do anything right. So fuck it. Right to the back. Right to the back. Oh, I walked outside the other day. The fender gone, gone, just gone. I said, "Honey, well, you were gonna tell me." Oh my god. You didn't see? I don't know where that happened. Maybe it happened in the garage where it's hanging. Maybe that's where it happened. <laughs> we're best friends, right? No, no, we're not best friends. Because my best friend wouldn't do that shit. <laughs> my best friend's not going to wreck my car, much less do it seven more times. And if my best friend did wreck my car, he would feel like shit. Because he's a person. And he would call me outside and go, Steve, I wrecked your car and I feel horrible. I'm going to get it fixed. I'm sorry. And I can see that you're upset right now. And if I was a woman, to make you feel better, would suck your dick. <laughs> He's my best friend. He knows that's my favorite. <laughs> you say we're best friends, honey. We'll be a pal. Can you be a butt? <laughs> oh, laugh it up. All you single guys get married. They stop. They stop. I used to get them. I used, oh, she'd murder it. She'd murder it. Oh, man, when we were dating like a porn star. Ah! With work ethic. She had work ethic. We're married now. Now she does it like somebody's holding a gun to her head. do this <laughs> well a little longer now honey uh, you took something that involves no talking but somehow we're having a conversation it's a job honey blow job it says it right there in the title <laughs> it's not blow fun it's not blow vacation so get down there close your eyes hold your breath clock in and go to work I can't, I, can't, I can't hang out with my friends uh, without having, uh, there's paperwork involved. Uh, I gotta have a meeting, a sales pitch. I gotta put together a slideshow. Thanks for coming, babe. Uh, on this first slide, you'll see I've been taking my lunch to work. And I've managed to save $30. Uh, on this next slide, you'll see a coupon for golf, which I would like to use on myself. Golf balls, you say? No, I'm not gonna buy any. I'm gonna stomp through the forest like an asshole. <laughs> See if I can't find some. Can't call my wife, can't call her when she's with her friends. If I call her, I get what, what, what? That's if she answers, what, what? We're busy, what? <laughs> In the history of nail salons, you've never seen women outside of those nail salons on the phone, you've never seen it? But every bar in America, there's a man underneath a tree. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I don't even know what I did, but I'm sorry. I, I was going to have one more beer. No, I don't need another beer. Fuck it. I'm coming home. Who needs friends, honey? I'm coming home. Fuck them. That's if my wife answers the phone. Sometimes she doesn't answer. Sometimes she doesn't even answer. And I'm calling and texting and I'm pissed. I'm ready to kill another. I'll kill her. I'm pissed. And she comes home and I go, Answer the phone! And she'll go, oh, what? You, you were trying to call me? And she looks at her phone. <laughs> I had it off. <laughs> if I had my phone off for four hours while I was with my friends, are you fucking kidding me? I would get home to the police <laughs> and my parents and her parents and her grandparents and my dead grandparents. <laughs> and they'd all be there and they'd all be scolding me. How dare you do that to her? She was worried about you, you piece of shit. What kind of a man doesn't answer his phone, you piece of shit? <laughs> that's why, that's why I don't hang out with single guys. Single men, you don't get it. You think you're a man, you're not a, you're not a man. 
All you got to do is take care of yourself. You don't even do that well. <laughs> You're not a man until you have a woman telling you what to do. <laughs> you want... You want to learn about patience and how not to kill another human being. <laughs> you get married. If I play golf with my single friends and my wife calls and I answer, my single friends like, pussy. <laughs> my married friends are like, oh shit. Uh, hey, do what you gotta do. Uh, just, just let us know if we gotta go. Uh, oh, she'll call, she'll call. She'll call, and you better answer. You can't go, what, what, what? You have, to, you have to talk. You have to solve her problem, whatever it is. Whatever her problem is, you have to solve it. You have to be a man. And it's always something stupid. It's always some bullshit. I'll be playing golf, and here it comes. Hello? Yeah, honey. No, I remember? I, you approved it. You... I'm playing golf, baby girl. What could I do for you? What? You, you need to play a DVD? <laughs> you don't know how to play a DVD. I'm not laughing at you. <laughs> All right, baby, well, I'll fix it when I'm done. No, we'll take care of it right now. Yeah. Oh, who needs to hang out with these other three guys? Fuck them. Yeah. <sighs> TV input, honey. Maybe you should let me talk. Uh, you asked me for help, remember? <laughs> on, the, on the remote, baby. TV input. On, uh, on the remote control. You don't see the remote control? TV. I'm not yelling. I'm not yelling at you. No. It says TV input, baby. HDMI. What remote are you using? Yeah, that remote doesn't do shit. <laughs> well, why are you mad at me? You're the one that called me. I'm standing under that train right now. Hello? Hello? Oh shit, I gotta go. <laughs> oh, she, she, wants, she wants to play a DVD. And my wife can shop. That woman can shop. All day, all the time. That woman can, she gets home, Pinterest, Pinterest, Pinterest. Look at this, look at this, look at this, look at this. What do you think of this? Look at this. What about this? I don't give a shit. <laughs> She'll shop all day, all day. She'll come home with 30 bags on a Saturday, 30. And we have to play prices right. <laughs> She'll pull an item out. Okay. How much do you think actual retail price? <laughs> I don't give a shit. No, serious, babe. Actual, okay, how much actual retail price? I used to love Price is Right, and you, you killed it. You killed it for me. I hate that game. No, ask me, okay, how much did I pay? How much did I pay? Uh, how much did I, how much did I, I don't give a shit! Three dollars, I got that for three dollars. I got it, three dollars. I hit it, I hit it, and I came back, and I got it for three dollars. She comes home with all the bags and she lays all the stuff out in the living room. She has to lay it out. And then she has to tell me everything about everything. She turns into an auctioneer. Uh, let me tell you, went over to Macy's, went over to Macy's, had 30% off, had another 20% off, got 10% off, $7 right there. I got that over at Macy's, got that 40% off right there. Let me tell you what I got over here. Went over to the, went over to the North Shore, went over to the North Shore, we got that on the North Shore, went over there, we got that over there. Over the North Shore, over here. Let me tell you what I got over here. Two for one, one for two, two for one, one for two. I got four pairs of shoes for the price of one. All this right here for $35 to this sassy bitch right here. Shit. That it. Thirty-five bucks. That's that's good, baby. Now how much did we spend? You have to ask. They won't tell you. You have to ask. If you don't ask, you don't get an answer. You have to ask. How much? Tell me how much. 400. You got all that? How did you spend $400? Well, these shoes were a million dollars. Shut! Up. 
It's not all, it's not all one-sided, man. So I love my wife, you know, because she puts up with my shit, you know. Uh, I mean, I, yeah, man, I, I wasn't, when she, I, I love her too because she didn't leave. All the others left. All the other ones, <laughs> she, she stayed. She stayed for some reason and raised me up pretty good, you know. She, but she still puts up with my shit. I, I still fuck up, you know, I still, I still I'll, I'll tell you a story, man. We were in, uh, <clears throat> we were in Vegas in April. I was performing there at the MGM Grand and. I invited my wife, yeah, I, was, I invited my wife. I invited my wife, and of course she came. It's Vegas, you know, that's, that's how women are. If it doesn't include me, no, uh, that's how they are. Your friends could call about Vegas, and you could tell your wife, babe, the guy's called about Vegas. Vegas, you think you're just gonna get up and go to Vegas? There's no money for Vegas. Uh, but you're invited, oh my God, I need a haircut? I need a new haircut. <laughs> We go to Vegas, me and the wife, and we have other couples we hang out with. That's what you do you, when you're married. You hang out with other couples, usually couples you can tolerate. <laughs> and hopefully they make about the same amount of money as you. <laughs> There's nothing worse than the broke friends that show up. You know, you're like, ah, oh, fuck. Yeah. <laughs> I guess we're not having steak. <laughs> and we did it up, you know, we did it up. My, my wife... My wife, uh, she, we went out, she dressed up very nice. She dressed me very nice. <laughs> I'll laugh it up, she dresses me. My wife, look at, uh, this outfit had a sticky note that said Saturday. <laughs> I'm, I'm her personal little Build-A-Bear. Uh, <laughs> she buys it, I wear it, man. That's the rule at my house. She, uh, she knows I don't like to shop, so what she does is she buys a bunch of stuff, brings it home, I try it on, she approves it, and that's what I wear. That's what I wear. Uh, she, knows I don't, she knows I don't like to try it on at the store. I hate that. I hate to try stuff on at the store, because sometimes she makes me, and, and, and I, I come out of the dressing room like a mad eight-year-old. Can we go? Can we go? So we're in Vegas with my buddies, and uh, we go out and get bottle service. You know, me and her, we get bottle service. We're drinking, we're having a good time, we're dancing. And then somewhere in the night, I, I lost my wife. Uh, I don't know, how, I, I, I told her I was gonna go play craps a little bit. And I, I, I was playing craps, and I was winning. I was winning a lot, and I never win, I never win. But this time I was winning a lot. And, and all the men were winning, and we were high-fiving and screaming. We are yeah, woo, yeah, baby, yeah, heart six, and we're screaming. So you women don't get it. You don't understand. <laughs> women don't understand what it feels like when men win in gambling. Let me help you out, ladies. Imagine you walk into Macy's, and everything is free. <laughs> and, yeah, yeah. Your vaginas would scream, <laughs> and, and then there'd be riots and dead people. But at, at first, uh, so we're winning, we're having a great time, we're drinking, and we're winning, and we're high-fiving, and then all of a sudden I hear, are you freaking kidding me? <laughs> and all the men at the table got scared. They're like, oh shit, is it mine? Oh shit. <laughs> One guy just left, he grabbed his shit, fuck it, I'm out of here. <laughs> he just left. I turned around, it was mine, it was my wife. And she was in her pajamas. Free range titties out. <laughs> she was pissed. I said, hey, babe, get over here. We're winning. She said, are you kidding me right now? And I go, what's your problem? She goes, my problem is it's 9.45 in the morning. I've been calling you for four hours. I thought you went to jail. <laughs> Which I could understand. I've been to jail several times <laughs> in our relationship. Just get over here right now. And the Crown Royal that I was drinking asked me to ask her if she wanted to go to breakfast. Uh, I go, you want to go to breakfast? <laughs> Just get over here right now. And all the men were like, you, you should go. Uh, she looks pissed. Uh, 
You know you're in trouble when your wife comes out in sleepy clothes, no bra. That's some, you're in some shit. Uh, never once have you seen an episode of Cops where a woman's wearing a bra. Never. <laughs> you're in trouble. She says, let's go. And my wife was stomping through the casino. I couldn't keep up because I was going like this. I was in so much trouble walking through the MGM Grand that other men, while I was walking by, were getting in trouble. <laughs> other women were like, look at him, you piece of shit. Look at him. Are you going to be like that? How are you going to be like that? Remember last time we came to Vegas? You motherfucker, you did that shit to me. Her tits are out. Poor girl. She's over there picking them up in front of the money. Goddamn shit. I woke up, uh, I woke up in my hotel room about 5 p.m. <laughs> naked, I was naked. Which leads me to believe that I tried to rape my wife. <laughs> I try to rape her sometimes when I'm drunk. <laughs> she, my wife was gone, she was gone, and so was the money. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I know who stole it. <laughs> but I didn't press charges. Uh, because she didn't press charges on me trying to rape her, so. <laughs> she came home about 7 p.m. with a lot of bags. She put them on the floor and became the auctioneer. <laughs> Let me tell you what I bought, motherfucker. You don't respect me, I don't respect you. See that shit right there? Full price, motherfucker. Full price. Bought that shit right there. <laughs> needed, <laughs> needed another Louis Vuitton? Got it, motherfucker. Check that shit out. Normally, normally, normally I buy Steve Maddox. That's what I buy Steve Maddox because I respect you and I don't want us to spend too much money. I don't buy Jimmy Choo's, but today, motherfucker, Jimmy Choo's. Yeah. Uh, so we even? <laughs> Most men in here are like, yeah, that's how it works. Yeah. Hell yeah. <laughs> Hell yeah. We, uh, that's how it is, man. You, you do it, though, don't you? You just, God, I hate her. <laughs> Sometimes I wish my wife would get hit by a truck. Uh, that's a horrible thing to say. I know, it's horrible. And, and I thought we were friends. I thought we could talk. <laughs> Sometimes I want out, all right? I'm going to be honest. Sometimes, not all the time. Most of the time, it's good. But some times I want out just but I don't get out you know why I don't get out because there's another man waiting to sleep with her <laughs> and I could not I could not imagine another man sleeping with my wife so I stay in I fucking stay in <laughs> so if my wife gets hit by a truck <laughs> problem solved If my wife gets hit by a truck, because I like her parents, and her parents like me, and if she gets hit by a truck, we'll probably still be friends. <laughs> and here's the best part. I can be a complete drunk, and people will defend me. <laughs> hey, man, why Steve drunk all the time? Shh. His wife got hit by a truck. <laughs> why Steve doing cocaine off that stripper's titties? Hey. Have a little respect. His wife got hit by a truck. <laughs> I had a dream when I was a kid and she stole it. I'll tell you my dream. When I was a little kid, my father took me to an Astros game. Yeah. And he told me, he said, bring, bring your glove. And I said, okay, but they're not going to hit it way up here. <laughs> I sat up there like, as a little kid, and I looked down, and I used to see those guys that sat behind home plate. And I used to tell myself that one of these days, I'm going to grow up, I'm going to make money, and I'm going to be the guy that sits behind home plate. And I'm proud to say, I'm proud to say last year I was able to do that. I was able to do Don't clap. Don't clap. Don't clap. Don't you dare clap. My wife was involved, Captain Evil. <laughs> That's what I call my wife, Captain Evil. She's like a messed up superhero. If I'm ever having too much fun, she will show up. <laughs> What's going on over here? What are you, smiling? We gotta go. We gotta go. 
I'm tired, I'm sick, I'm hungry, I'm cold, I'm hot, I hate him, I hate her. Fuck! <laughs> and I'll tell you how it happened. I was sitting at home and I called my buddy up. I said, me, you, opening day, home plate. And I hung up the phone. And here comes Captain Evil. How come you didn't invite me? I said, first of all, how did you hear that? You're in, the, you're in the kitchen, I'm in the living room. How come when I'm screaming at the top of my lungs for a beer, you're nowhere to be found? Now I'm having a private conversation in code in your satellite ears all of a sudden. Just what's going on over here? How come you didn't invite me? I said, honey, you don't like baseball. My wife, my wife doesn't like baseball. You know how I know she doesn't like baseball? I watch it on TV. And she walks by that TV and goes, uh, How can you watch that? Is there a game every day? No, ma'am. Sometimes there's two. Now, all of a sudden, I'm spending $500 on tickets, and guess who's an Astros fan? All of a sudden. <laughs> Captain Evil. Now, I gotta call my buddy, tell my buddy that Captain Evil has to come. I call him up, I said, man, I got bad news. He said, what? I go, Captain Evil has to come. He goes, oh, that's good news. I was trying to figure out how to tell you Deelzebub has to come. <laughs> that's, that's what he calls his wife, Deelzebub. But not to her face, he calls her angel. Because the devil was an angel too. I call mine honey, short for the honey badger. Now, the four of us are going to the game. I tell my wife before we leave, I go, you're gonna get cold, wear a coat. You need to wear a coat, it gets cold, wear a coat, sweater, something. She didn't, she didn't, she didn't wear any of it. It didn't match her outfit. I, I brought a coat. I, I, I brought a coat. Who's wearing a coat now? Well, not, not me. I'm freezing my ass off. Captain Evil is toasty right here. I don't even get to sit next to my buddy. I'm sitting here. Captain Evil's here. DL's above's here. He's way over there. We don't even get to talk. We just look at each other. They talk. They're talking. Oh, yeah. Not even about baseball. Oh my God, I went over to the Macy's, had 20% off at the Macy's. And I, I got this for $17. $17! I wonder if they sell wine. Baby, think they sell wine? Go check if they sell wine. <laughs> Am I watching the game? No, like an asshole. I'm walking around trying to see if they sell wine. <laughs> and I can't ask just one person. I have to ask the entire stadium. Because God forbid, I sit back down with no wine and my wife sees another woman with wine. Then the entire game, I have to hear, she has wine, how come she has wine? Look, she has wine, that's wine, I can tell that's wine. That's wine, she has a good husband, I'll go get it, fuck it, I'll just go get it, because you don't care, you don't care about me, you don't care about me, her husband cares, her husband, she has wine, look at that's wine, I can tell that's wine, shit! <laughs> and I'm sitting down, finally, I get back after an hour and a half, she has a beer in her hand. Well, you took forever, you motherfucker. <laughs> you have to ask God for help. God, help me right now, please help me. <laughs> finally, I sit down. And I'm finally enjoying the game that I've, I've dreamt about. And every time they would hit a foul ball, I would jump out of my seat. So would my buddy, hoping the foul ball was coming to me. The foul ball would go off, and I'd jump up. About the fourth time, I looked back at my wife. She goes, you're an idiot, you know that? And I said, really, honey? Because if Louis Vuittons were flying over that fence, there'd be some dead bitches here at the Astros. <laughs> Tickets would be $3,000 a ticket. And somehow we'd find room in our budget for that! <laughs> what I'm trying to say, ladies, is... You're a bad person. <laughs> yeah. 
Sometimes, you know, I'll, I'll, okay, first of all, nothing's yours. You get married, it's not yours anymore, nothing. Nothing is yours. Sometimes I go to McDonald's, man, I don't care, I get crazy. I go to McDonald's for dinner. I, I might call her first, I'm not stupid. <laughs> and I don't know why I call her, I already know the answer. I know what she's gonna say. But, hey, babe, I'm going to McDonald's. <laughs> McDonald's? <laughs> McDonald's? Are you sure you want to go to McDonald's? Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure. I, I drove into the McDonald's. I called you, asked you if you wanted McDonald's. I'm pretty fucking sure. Oh, if you like making decisions, don't get married. My wife makes decisions for me. I don't even know why she asks. Hey, babe, how many hot dogs do you want? I'll take three, two, I said three, I said fucking three. <laughs> you think you should have three? That wasn't the question. That was not the question. <laughs> the question's how many do I want? And the answer's three. <laughs> Sometimes I say four, I say, give me four. She'll still bring two, she'll still bring two. <laughs> I'll sit down, I'll get my McDonald's, I'll, I'll ask her, very clearly, do you want McDonald's? And my wife will say no. She will say no, and I'll make her text it to me. I go, you text that to me. <laughs> I need evidence, I need proof. I need... You text that to me. <laughs> and I go home with my McDonald's, I sit on the couch. I rip the bag open like a man. I put the french fries on the bag. I take a little, little salt and pepper, make them real nice. And here comes Captain Evil. Oh my God, this is so good. This is delicious. I shouldn't. I really, no, you shouldn't because I bought them for me. I just want a few. Then I would have bought you a few. I would have, it says no right here on the phone. It says no. It doesn't say a few. It says no. You want a few? I would have bought you a large. You could have had a few, thrown them away. But those are mine. How come you didn't bring barbecue sauce? Is that for me? She'll get the last one, that piece of shit. <laughs> she does it real cute. <sighs> it's so good. Take it, just take it. I got a 10 piece in the car, I know what I'm doing. <laughs> I'm Steve Trevino, thank you very much. Thank you. No matter, no matter how big or small a show I do, whether there's 10 people or 10,000, I always say that we can't forget why we live in a great country. We live in a great country because men and women volunteer to defend it. That's our U.S. military. Tonight, uh, and let's, not, let's also not forget that there's some men and women in this room that served in the Vietnam War. Let's not forget about them. All our Vietnam vets, give them a round of applause, please. We're very, very lucky people tonight. Very, very lucky, because in the, in the hall, in the house tonight, I have some of our wounded veteran heroes. They're right over here. Where are they at? Stand up, stand up. All my, all my wounded vets, stand up. Clap for them. That, those are the stars. Thank you, all of you, thank you. We here in South Texas respect you and honor you. Thank you very much. One more round of applause for our wounded vets. And now, ladies and gentlemen, from right here in Corpus Christi, Texas, how about a little Rancho Grande? Yeah. 
Señorita, qué alegre me decía, qué alegre me decía. Te voy a hacer tus calzones como los que usa el ranchero. Con los comienzo de la con los acabo de cuero. Su mamá le dice a Julia, su mamá le dice a Julia, que te ha dicho, no sé, señor, ay, 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 mamá no me dijo nada, mamá no me dijo nada, solo me hablo de amor, ay, 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 por gusto de los vaqueros, por una muchacha. Para salir a la plaza, dale vuelo a la I am a Tu mamá le dice a Julia que te ha dicho a su señor, ay, 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 mamá no me dijo nada, mamá no me dijo nada, solo me habló de amor, ay, 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 cuando se muera mi suegra, que me quiere el boca abajo. Porque si quiere salirse, que se meta 